what's up, what's up, what's up, people? I just want to briefly touch on the state of the primaries, the upcoming debate, and my frustration with this whole situation. Now, the upcoming primary debate, Democratic primary debate, is going to be in Atlanta, in Tyler Perry Studios. So hopefully they address more black issues this time. Because throughout this primary, it's been lacking. Early on, there's some superficial questions about reparations, but not really getting into specifically what their view on reparations is and how exactly they're going to lay it out. Most candidates have said they either support reparations or basically the HR 40 bill, but don't say whether or not they support cash reparations. And my thing on is this. I'm realistic on reparations. I support it 100%. Um, I know getting cash reparations at this point in time will be extremely hard. Um, right now, they're just not the votes for it. There's not the overall public support for it. Um, last poll was around 32%. And I think we have more work to do to get reparations um, further and in a better position to pass. One of the first things is that there should be really no black people going against reparations. It should be universal that we deserve reparations. Um, the way we talk about reparations, I think, should be a little bit different. A lot of people boil it down strictly to slavery. I think that's a losing political argument. I think you should include the Jim Crow era. Um, the massacres that happen in black communities, the economic destruction. Most people know about Black Wall Street, but there was tons of other communities that similar things happened to. Um, Contel Pro, you have the war on drugs. There's so much stuff we could, uh, we could get into. Even the 94 crime bill would disproportionately affect black people. So there's so much stuff you could build a case on reparations. I think you limited it. Um, the argument by just keeping it to slavery, you know, and I understand why because, you know, there's some people that don't want any immigrants getting any type of reparations, any type of black immigrants getting any type of rep reparations, um, the ADOS movement. So if you broaden that argument a little bit more, that might defeat that particular purpose. Um, so I don't know, the way we talk about it need to be different. And by the way, I am 100% ADOS myself, but I think some of the arguments that some of the people in the organization is using is a little bit flawed when it comes to limiting it strictly to slavery because it's so much more beyond slavery. But anyway, um, and just besides reparations, there's other black issues that I want address because even if reparations is passed, I don't think it's going to be a cure-all. I think we need it. I think we deserve it just off a of principle alone too. Not even to mention the economic devastation that uh, been brought to black people over the years. But uh, beyond just reparations, we need other black issues addressed. Uh, a lot of candidates have addressed criminal justice reform, which is cool. Um, and I think it's needed. I know the First Step Act was passed through Congress and Trump signed it which is a watered down version of criminal justice reform. Basically, it gives judges more leeway to um, have more lenient sentences. That's one major aspect of it. I mean, I take it, but there's a lot of corrupt judges out there, so um, it's better than what it was before. I support it, but it's definitely just the first step back. And much more on criminal justice reform than we've done. And um, I like the fact that some of these candidates have addressed that. Bernie Sanders have a good uh, criminal justice reform plan now, and um, several other candidates do as well. But it needs to be more than just criminal justice reform. I think we need to get more specific. I want to hear candidates talk more specifically about police reform. Why is that? Because if you have criminal justice reform, yes, it um, affects mandatory minimums. It might give um, past felons the right to vote. Maybe expunge some people records, get rid of cash bills. I'm for all that. That's all great. It needs to be done. 
but specifically what is going to stop police from violating our rights, rights from using excessive force, um, and you know, in some cases, just outright, outright killing on our black people. That need to be addressed, and you can address it on the federal level. I know a lot of this is state level issues, but the Justice Department can do a lot. Um, the last couple of years of the Obama administration, Eric Holder um, basically initiated a few investigation, um, and the Attorney General after Eric Holder, I forget her name for whatever reason. Usually, I'm good at that stuff, but off the top of my head, I'm forgetting her name right now. But both of them had led investigations into Baltimore Police Department, into Ferguson Police Department, and forced some mandatory changes. So you can do that on the federal level. Um, I think you can use the Fourth Amendment violations more often. You can, um, I know they've been tinkering with uh, federal money with body cameras and things of that nature. And, you know, they could actually pass a national use of force laws. I know some states and local municipalities might challenge it, but at the end of the day, you can use the supremacy clause. You know, um, the, what is the supremacy clause? That's federal law take precedence over state laws. So, you know, depending on what judge hear it, it might get thrown out, but I at least would try that. We definitely need a national use of force to hold some of these police officers accountable. So hopefully we get specific, specific questions on that today. Um, also about specific economic issues. So there's been a lot of, well, I won't even say a lot of economic proposals because it hasn't been talked about too much uh, because people assume that the economy is doing well because that's what the GDP, the, <coughs> excuse me, that's what the GDP said, right? Um, but out here in the real world, in Main Street, a lot of people are still struggling. People have jobs, but are underpaid. Um, there's an argument that a lot of Trump supporters say that black unemployment is at an all-time low. And like his policies have something to do with it. This is a continuing trend under the Obama administration. Um, and both administrations haven't really had focused policies to increase black unemployment. Very little have been done in in that aspect. The overall economy been getting better. So because the overall economy been getting better, more black people have been able to get jobs. But that doesn't mean, and this is more than just black people, the overall public too, that the economy is good. Because a lot of these service jobs don't pay a lot of money. People are underpaid. People happen to work more than one job to survive. Um, so the unemployment is not really a good determinant factor in my opinion. Also, it doesn't count people that stop looking for unemployment because there's a lot of people that have been unemployed for so long they have just stopped looking. So, I mean, like the economy is definitely better than it, it was after the recession, but there's still a lot of problems and in my opinion with all the deregulation that have been going on under the Trump administration, that could lead to another crash. It could definitely lead to another crash. You had the massive tax cuts he did with, on top of that, rolling back certain provisions in Dodd-Frank, the uh, bill that was passed right after the economic recession. So that's something to look out for. Hopefully we get some questions on that um, because there's been very little talk about all the deregulation that the Trump administration have been doing. Um, there's been very little talk about specific economic plans. Like, what you gonna do? They always talk about the working class. Uh, what you gonna do for the working class? What you gonna do specifically for impoverished black communities? Do you have specific economic plans that you think will happen? Um, one of my problems with um, Bernie, I like Bernie Sanders all together, but some of his policies, uh, I heard him say before that he thinks his policies will help everybody, and, you know, which is good, and I think a lot of his policies would help everybody, and would be beneficial to black people, like Medicare for all, um, however, however, 
black people need specific policies directed towards us. You know, just because we've been in a bad economic state for a long time now, we need specific policies. I think every community needs specific policies directed for them. The struggles is not universal. The struggles that a lot of black communities have is and the remedy to fix them is going to be a little bit different or maybe even a lot different in some areas than some impoverished rural communities which have a lot of problems too which a little bit problems need to be addressed here as well but sometimes a universal program can't solve those problems you need to see okay each community is different also in different parts of the country the problems is a little bit different too so we need to have like universal policies is good but you need specific policies every i think every group needs specific policies because um we are not one monolithic group in america they call it the melting pot there's so many so much diversity there's so much um there, there's so many different um cultures and with that there's different problems so i want to hear specific problems addressed uh, specific economics and some of their proposals I want to give specific details like um, a lot of people like Yang the Yang gang is big and I really appreciate Yang bringing UBI universal basic income or his freedom dividend which he, he ran in as now I like it uh, I definitely like it I know there's been some trials done with it um the, specifically the way he's doing it though I think some questions need to be asked um, for me one of the questions I want to know is because he have the opt-in option right where you could choose to opt in or, or opt out and where I think it becomes a little tricky is for people that's already getting certain benefits like you have people let's just say that's getting snapped that's getting other type of government um, benefits, right? What happens to them? Like, you know, uh, because he has stated as one to other, like you can't get certain government benefits if you choose to opt in to his UBI program. So my question with that is, let's just say somebody's getting, I don't know, I'm just making up a, a number off the top of my head, like, $200 worth of SNAP benefits, right? Basically food stamps. Like, a little ambulance coming, but nah, um, when somebody get in um, $200 worth of SNAP benefits, of course they're going to opt into your program, but because the UBI program is universal, would that lead to more income inequality? I think that's a valid question. Like, if you have somebody, let's just say, that's making a hundred thousand dollars a year, and they getting a thousand dollars a month too, that's an extra twelve grand for them. Now, the UBI is benefiting the poor people because, like, um, and the people that's already getting benefits because they are getting more money. However, they not getting the same benefit everybody else is getting because it's either opt in or opt out. Um, I know some people will say, well. You know, this is easier. I understand the arguments with it. I understand that um, you wouldn't have to keep doing the paperwork with DSS and things of that nature, which would make it easier and like a little bit less stressful for them. But I do think these are valid questions that need to be asked. So hopefully we get into that. Um, Bernie Sanders, uh, before when he was asked about reparations, he remembered the 10th, he mentioned the 102030 program, uh, but very, but gave very little specifics on it. I know what it is. I looked it up. Basically, the 102030 is for like um, impoverished communities that have been in poverty for um, those particular amount of decades. Um, but for me, um, it really meant to address like a lot of rural communities. I know it says communities overall, if you read the bill, it's a little dicey. I want to know how can we make sure that black communities would get those benefits. And, like, you know, I, I need to know those details. How would you 
expect that to be done. You know, because you mentioned it, it as a solution for black people and black communities, but you have gave very little details on exactly how that will work. Elizabeth Warren had her historical redlining correction program. Uh, that's one of the first things she announced it. She announced it last November, almost a year ago. Um, she went through and broke down how redlining had devastated black communities, and I appreciate that. Um, she have a she have a proposal for that. Um, I think basically to give first time home buyers um, government options. I think maybe like to lessen down payments and help give them a little bit of money to buy homes in historically red line areas. My question with that is, uh, I think that she needs to answer specifically. That's cool, but would that lead to justification? You know, like, who would be eligible for this program? Um, and how could we make sure that the right people are getting those funds and it doesn't lead to more justification in black neighborhoods? So um, I would like her to be asked those questions. So there's several different questions that I would like asked. Now, now same thing with Kamala Harris, because Kamala Harris have... Um, a housing proposal as well so um, a similar question need to be asked to her um, Cobra Charity to be pushed on her police record there was a question asked in one of the earlier debates and she kind of skated around the question never been brought back up Buttigieg definitely need to be asked about his handling of firing um, the, fir the first black police chief in South Bend um, him ignoring racial racial discrimination claims within his police department and unarmed black people being shot in his city. Um, the free pass that Bubajas have gotten is really disgusting. And in another video, I might um, address Judge again and how some of the progressive media have, in my opinion, dropped the ball on the primary. A lot of progressives have been so hyper-focused on Elizabeth Warren because Bernie is their man that they have I think sometimes taken the eye off the ball while everybody been focusing and piling on Elizabeth Warren quietly Buddha Judge is now leading Iowa and a poll got him leading in New Hampshire I don't know how accurate that poll is because the sample size was very small but you can't deny that Buddha Judge have been making a lot of progress and have been rising in the polls so I understand some people frustrations with Elizabeth Warren um, I got some critiques of her as well but overall she's a much better option than somebody like Buddha Judge in the might and the amount of attention that a lot of people on the left been paying attention to her to bury her I think have left a lot of people unfocused on the overall goal. You know, um, it's, it's a bit frustrating to me. It, it, it really has been frustrating for me to watch some of this coverage because some of these shows, you know it's going to be almost non-stop Elizabeth Warren fashion. And that's the show. And another thing I want to mention is I, I might I'm going to make separate videos about this too. We need to stop counting out Joe Biden because Biden right now I think if the primary is held is start right now I think he's more than likely to win. Now I know Buddha Judge been rising, but I think he's dead on arrival when it comes to the South. When it comes to getting uh, black votes, right? <laughs> poll came out recently where he's at zero percent with black voters in South Carolina. I don't see how he could ever get black votes. Uh, recent video came out. He was uh, at a Tea Party party gathering in 2010. Um, his history with the police in South Bend. Like, so I don't see how he can win black votes with his record. Just simple and plain. Uh, but, you know, if he does win Iowa and have a really good showing in New Hampshire, I think that clears the way for Biden to win because the only way Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, I think, have a chance to win, they have to win Iowa and New Hampshire, in my opinion, because that can screenboard them, get them more media attention, people start taking them more 
seriously and I don't think they will either one of them will win the majority of black votes um, but they can start eating into percentage and maybe get the nomination you know what I'm saying so I think the only way that happens though is if they win Iowa and New Hampshire if that doesn't happen I think Biden I think that clears the way for Biden to win the whole thing you know um, so a lot of progressives uh, think Biden is done Biden is nowhere near done in my opinion, he's the favorite right now, unless things change dramatically. Now, there's still two months before Iowa. I think things can change a lot. I think Buddha Judge is going to get more attacks. If the candidates are smart, they would attack him viciously, viciously today because he got little to no record. The record he has is pretty poor. So, hopefully, in the next two months, a lot of things change. But I'm just talking about as of now. I think Biden is the favorite to win if things don't change and if progressives don't get their act together. But, but all right, that's my morning book drive. Uh, thanks for listening. You know, I'm going to come out with um, a few other videos about these topics. Peace.